Hey there, this is Sean Faulkner with Skyflow. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to Skyflow's data APIs. These are the APIs that you use to perform CRUD operations with a vault, as well as tokenized and detokenized data. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to use the Postman collection available from within Skyflow Studio, but you could of course perform all these operations using curl commands or the SDKs that we have available on our GitHub page. If you want to follow along, go ahead and log into Skyflow Studio now and make sure that you have a quick start vault available. And let's go ahead and get started. To access the Postman collection, click browse on the quick start vault. Then go to the icon right of the gear icon and click Postman collection from the menu. This will download a JSON file to your computer containing the information Postman needs. Head on over to postman.com. If you don't have an account, it's free to sign up. Once you're logged in, go ahead and create a workspace. I'm going to call mine Skyflow Demo. Once the workspace is created, click on Import and drag and drop the downloaded JSON file. You should see something that looks like this on your screen. If you open the navigation on the left, you can see that there are already predefined CRUD operations for the tables in your vault, as well as entry points for detokenization and query operations. Before we can execute any of these, we need to give Postman a bearer token for making the API calls. If you're using the trial environment, you can generate a bearer token that's good for 24 hours directly from the UI. This is only available in the trial environment. Alternatively, you can follow our documentation to create a bearer token based on a service account key. I'm going to use the bearer token available in the Studio UI by going back to the Studio and clicking my initials on the top right. Then click on Generate API Bearer Token. Click the Generate Token button and then copy the token. To configure the Postman collection to use the bearer token I just copied, I click on the top level node and under authorization paste in the bearer token in the token field, then click save on the right. We should be good to go now. To test it, let's go to the person's CRUD operations in the bolt get persons API. Just click the send button and we should get a JSON response of data from the persons table. If you click the code icon on the right, you can see what the call structure looks like. You can also switch the view from curl to any language you're comfortable with. Next, let's try inserting a record. Click on the insert persons node, then click on the body tab. Fill in the body payload with the person details that you want to create. I'm going to enter details for a person record of John Doe born January 1st, 1990. Leave tokenization as false. Click on the code button to take a look at the structure of the API call. We're doing a post against the person's URI with a body containing the JSON object representing a new person record. Go ahead and click send. You see a payload returned with the Skyflow ID for the new record. If you had set tokenization to true, you would see the Skyflow ID along with a payload containing the tokenized representation of the values you inserted. Go ahead and copy the ID and then let's try getting the record. On the left, click on get person. The get person API needs the Skyflow ID to be passed as part of the URL. Once you have the Skyflow ID pasted, click send and you should see the John Doe record. Try clicking on tokenization and changing the value to true and running the same call. You'll now see the record with tokenized values. There's lots of other options that you can play with as well. For now, let's use the detokenize API endpoint to detokenize these values. Let's copy the email token and then go to the detokenize API. Paste in the email token and set the download URL to false, then click send. You'll see something that looks like this, where the email token was exchanged for the raw text value. It's important to note, you can only detokenize tokens like this if your API bearer token maps to a role that has a policy with explicit permissions to detokenize. Let's try updating John's record. Click on the Update Persons option on the left. Paste in John's Skyflow ID and then go to the Body tab. I'm going to update John's state to main and delete the other parts of the body because I don't want to update those. Click Send and I get the Skyflow ID back. John's record should now be updated, but let's check by using the Query Operation API. The Query Operation lets you run a SQL query as an API call. For example, let's try select star from persons where name equals John Doe. You should get back the John Doe record and see the state is now main. Copy the Skyflow ID for John, and then let's try deleting John's record. In the delete API, paste in John's Skyflow ID and then click send. 
Once it's complete, if you go back to the query operation and rerun the query, you should see that no results are returned. Thank you so much for watching this quick introduction to Skyflow's data APIs. There's of course a lot more you can do with the APIs. You can learn more in our developer documentation at docs.skyflow.com.